I used to get upset if a video on my channel didn't get a lot of views. I used to get upset if I forgot a word in English and had to use Google Translate. I used to get upset if my accent in Spanish sounded a little too Russian. Until one day, I decided to stop feeling sorry for myself and turn every obstacle into an opportunity. Today, I want to talk to you about motivation in general and motivation when it comes to learning foreign languages. I want to give you a couple of tips that will help you stop feeling like a failure and start looking at every hurdle in a positive way. Look, we've all been there. We've all had days when we felt like our English was absolutely horrible. Like our accent did not sound like it should and we forgot even the most essential words. But I think what helped me stay positive in those days is realizing that taking a step back is a part of the journey. Progress is usually two steps forward, one step back. And every time you take this one step back, I want you to remember about the next two steps forward. Before I jump into the tips about motivation and feeling better about yourself, I want to share a story with you guys when I felt like a failure. And this story is about learning Chinese. I feel like if you're learning a foreign language, you always have this type of story. For me, obviously, I had a lot of those stories because in the past, I studied French as well and obviously English and then Chinese. And believe me, guys, I felt like a failure in a lot of different situations. But when I was in college, I had a Chinese class. And during an exam, I completely spaced out and forgot the majority of the words. It was a written exam and I didn't write almost anything. Naturally, I got a D minus and I felt so bad about myself because it was my third year learning Chinese and all of us thinking was how could I forget this word? You know, it was so easy. It's like a basic word in Chinese, but I forgot how to write it. But in retrospect, that exam didn't really mean much. And it just showed me that, you know, I'm not a fan of writing Chinese characters, which is totally fine and I decided to focus on communication instead. When I chatted to some of my Chinese friends, they consoled me by saying that even native speakers sometimes forget how to write certain words in Chinese because the writing system is extremely difficult. And so even though at that time it felt like the worst thing that could have happened right now i think you know it was a good learning experience for me because i focused on communication i focused on developing my speaking skills because i just didn't enjoy writing that much but to be completely honest because the exam made me feel like a failure i decided to sign up for calligraphy classes and even though the majority of them were boring as heck i improved my writing technique a lot and here you can see some of the pictures from this calligraphy course honestly our professor was absolutely incredible. I am just not this type of person who enjoys sitting for a long time in one spot and trying to, you know, write one single character very pretty, paying a lot of attention to every single stroke. So from this story, we can learn the first tip. When you feel demotivated, when you feel like a failure, when you feel like you can't do anything, try to remember the things that bring you joy in your day-to-day -day life. For me, it was speaking. So I decided to focus on chatting with my Chinese friends more. If you lack the motivation to learn English, try to think of something you enjoy doing in your regular life. It can be watching a movie, reading a book, listening to music, or doing yoga, for example. And for me, this is something I do. I like doing yoga and I do it in English. It's so easy, guys. It's so easy to implement this one little step in your daily routine. Instead of doing a workout in your native language, you can just Google the same type of workout in English. And even if you don't understand certain words, it's totally fine because they're going to be showing you all the movements and, you know, you're going to be learning English and also exercising, which is pretty amazing. So as a recap, if you do something that is important and interesting to you, you will naturally find more motivation to do it in English. My second tip will be about understanding the root cause of your demotivation. For example, when it comes to learning a foreign language, a lot of people lack the motivation because they're experiencing fear. They're afraid of making mistakes and would rather slow down and stay in their comfort zone. To get motivated, you need to deal with your fear. I often like to ask myself these questions. What's the worst thing that could happen if I do this? Why am I afraid of that happening? And after just these two questions, most of my fears slip away. And this gives me more motivation to achieve my language goals. Let me give you an example from my life. When I lived in New York, I had to make a doctor's appointment. And for me, it was 
so scary to call because when you're calling and you're talking to someone on the phone you really need to focus the only way you can understand this person is through listening because you're not talking with a video right so you can't even rely on the body language so for me answering the question what was i most afraid of was probably that i was gonna space out i was not gonna understand anything and asking myself the second question why am i afraid of that happening i think it was because i just thought of myself as a person who could speak english right who had a pretty high level and for me it was very embarrassing to admit to myself that i sometimes did not understand english but after talking to myself in this way for a couple of minutes i just realized that it was so unimportant you know again for me the most important thing was to get this doctor's appointment. And it doesn't matter if I understood something or if I missed something, you know, it's not the end of the world. My tip number three is try to commit to learning English publicly. No one likes to look bad in front of others. And we will go the extra mile to do something we've said publicly. For example, on YouTube, you can find a lot of videos where people challenge themselves to wake up at 5 a.m. every single morning for a week. Or where people try to learn a new language in a month. And all of these YouTubers couldn't back down and even though their motivation came and went, they stuck with their challenge and completed it. Now, of course, you don't have to commit to anything on YouTube if you don't have a YouTube channel. There is no reason for you to do that or even on Instagram, but you can do it with your friends or with your family, for example. And the most important part here is to hold yourself accountable. Don't just come to your friend and tell them, you know, so I challenge myself to learn English in a month and then you know the next time you talk to your friend is gonna be in a month no it's not a very good idea I think a better idea would be to give progress updates every single week for example this way you're more likely to stick to the challenge but if you want to go this extra mile you could always do it on social media because this way even more people are gonna be involved in this challenge you know even more people are gonna know that right now you're learning English or you know if you challenge yourself to wake up like at a specific time every single morning even the more people are gonna hold you accountable and to be completely honest guys this is actually something that I've been thinking of doing I actually want to make a video on my vlog channel where I challenge myself to wake up at 5 a.m every single morning for a week I know that I would probably have to go to bed at like eight or something but i am ready for it so if you would like to see a vlog from me where i try to wake up at 5 a.m every single morning let me know in the comments my tip number four is start small if you're having trouble getting started it may be because you're thinking too big if you want to learn english for example you might be thinking that you need to commit to two hours of english every single day you know to be completely honest not every single one of us has two hours every single day to learn English. Instead, you could do small, tiny baby steps. For example, just spend 10 minutes memorizing new words on Quizlet. Just 10 minutes a day. I know for some people it might sound wimpy, but believe me, it works. Commit to 10 minutes of English every single day for a week. You might want to do more, but don't. Only do 10 minutes. This is the most important part. And once you've done 10 minutes a day for a week, you can increase it to 20. You can add additional exercises. Maybe you can read something or watch a video. And then later on, you could increase it to 30 or even 40 or even an hour a day. The most important thing here, guys, is to stay consistent. If you think you can do 20 minutes a day for a week and be consistent, go for it. And my last tip is for those who suffer from procrastination. Try the Pomodoro technique. The Pomodoro technique involves setting a 25 minute timer for each task. The time will go by so quickly and you will end up with a feeling of accomplishment. Once these 25 minutes are up, you can take a five minute break and then do another 25 minute session. But if you feel like 25 minutes seems too short it's totally fine you can change your pomodoro technique you can do 30 minutes and then like a 10 minute break or some people even do 50 minutes and then a 10 minute break the most important part here is that you alternate studying or working with resting and before i wrap this video up i wanted to share some book recommendations with you that could help you get motivated and stop feeling like a failure the first book is atomic habits by james clear a very famous book that will help you form 
healthy habits. The author gives actionable advice for making small changes that will later on help you achieve any big goals in life. The next book is The 7 Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. This book was written a long time ago, but it's a classic in the self-help space. I think the thing that I like about this book the most is that it's written in this very inspirational style and it uses a lot of real-world examples and anecdotes to help you get started on your motivational journey. The next book that I really like is You're a Badass by Jen Sincero. This book is incredibly easy to read and the most important message is doing anything with love and self-care. And the last book that I'm a huge fan of is The Subtle Art of Not Giving an F-U-C-K by Mark Manson. Mark Manson is one of my favorite authors and I absolutely adore his writing style. Basically, the most important message of the book is that you need to become comfortable with being uncomfortable. So as usual, you'll find all the links to the books, to the resources in the description under this video. And I think I can wrap this video up on this note. I hope right now you feel a lot more motivated, you feel like you can do it, you feel like you can learn English, or even if it's not about English, you can do anything in this world. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and follow me on Instagram. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!